Big Engine four-place singles have something in common. They're reasonable to own, and they offer nice value for the money. Cirrus currently dominates this segment, but the 60s ushered in a legend that's still loved today, the Piper PA28 235-236 Dakota. Big Engine singles exemplified in this segment include the Cessna 182, the 185, and the Mule. The 185 and the Mule are more in line of working bus planes, however. The 182 and the Piper entry are more mainstream in their design. The 182 has been, by any measure, a success. It features a good combination of utility, roominess, and performance. The Piper entry, however, never quite matched the 182 in terms of popularity. Nevertheless, it has a lot going for it decent performance, simplicity, and common, proven components. If your needs include a big dose of horsepower coupled to a simple airframe, the biggest Cherokee is certainly a valid candidate. Introduced in 1979, the Piper PA28236, popularly known as the Piper Cherokee Dakota, is one of the many variants of the Piper Cherokee and a direct successor to the Piper Cherokee Pathfinder, which was produced from 1974 to 1977. The Dakota was essentially the same as the Pathfinder with one major change. It was given a tapered wing. Like most of the variants in the Cherokee line, the Piper Dakota is a single-engine, piston-powered all-metal aircraft with low-mounted wings and fixed tricycle landing gear. The aircraft can seat four people in total, one crew and three passengers. Access to the aircraft is via a single right-hand side door. The Dakota shared nearly all of its components with the Pathfinder, which included the 235-horsepower Lycoming 0540 J3A5D. A tapered wing has many benefits over a traditional rectangular wing because its design results in an increase in lift and a reduction in drag. The inclusion of a tapered wing in the design of the Piper Dakota meant that it outperformed its predecessor in many aspects. The first and biggest advantage the Dakota has over the Pathfinder is the increase in overall speed. Both aircraft weigh the same and have the same engine, which produces the same amount of power. The Pathfinder has a top speed of 140 knots and a cruise speed of 126 knots. In contrast, the Dakota has a top speed of 8 knots faster and a cruise speed of 17 knots faster. Another benefit that Dakota has over the Pathfinder, thanks to its tapered wings, is the larger wing tanks, which have a major impact on the range. Smaller improvements from the design were an increased rate of climb and reduced ground roll. The last Piper Dakota rolled off the line in 1994, and over its 12-year production run, there weren't any significant changes made to the setup of the Dakota. There were minor changes made to the aircraft's paint, avionics, and interior to keep it updated, but that was the extent of it. Piper stretched and enlarged the frame of the standard Piper Cherokee to give the Dakota a larger footprint. The Dakota was made 5 inches or 12.7 centimeters longer, a larger horizontal tail for more rudder authority, and an increase in wingspan due to the new design. Piper's habit of modifying the Cherokee to meet different requirements means the design of the Dakota isn't anything to write home about. A benefit to this is that all Cherokees have the same basic principles and owners can expect different models to behave similarly in nearly all aspects. The larger fuselage of the Dakota translates to a more spacious cabin. The extra space has allowed Piper to install four fully adjustable seats that are known to be comfortable, which makes long journeys in the Dakota easy. These seats were also built with safety in mind. In the event of a crash, the specially designed seat frame deforms on impact, absorbing energy and protecting the passenger. Powered by a D-rated 235-horsepower Lycoming 0450 engine, 
you'll never find yourself wanting power in the Piper Dakota. Increasing the throttle produces a very palpable response from the aircraft even when it's fully loaded. Climb performance was also increased thanks to the new wing. For example, the Pathfinder can only climb at a rate of 800 feet per minute, but the Dakota has a climb rate of 1,110 feet per minute, which is a 38% increase. The landing ground roll also decreased significantly from 1,040 feet on the Pathfinder to 825 feet on the Dakota. At 75% power, the Dakota will blister along at 144 knots, burning 13.5 gallons per hour. But if you throttle back to 65%, you'll see 138 knots at 11.8 gallons per hour. Fuel capacity is quite reasonable. The Dakota can carry 77-gallon fuel tanks, which allows the Dakota to fly 710 nautical miles non-stop with 45-minute reserve. The Dakota behaves like any other Cherokee model. However, the tapered wing makes it more responsive and requires less force to operate than older models. Many owners love the way the Dakota handles and say it's a dream to fly. The Piper PA-28s have a nose gear that doesn't self-center and is linked to the rudder pedals full-time. This is a feature that is present in the Dakota as well. This poses an issue in flight, as any time rudder is applied, the nose wheels also deflect it. The addition of fairings only serves to exacerbate the effect. The larger issue with this characteristic is the chance of the nose wheel being unknowingly deflected during a landing which is an obvious hazard. Seasoned Cherokee pilots are well aware of the issue, but beginners should have it in mind until it can be corrected subconsciously. The center of gravity of the Dakota tends to be towards the front because of the heavy engine and propeller combination. While a forward center gravity ensures stalls are easy to get out of, takeoffs require more back pressure. Landings are an entirely different story. Finesse and fine control are required to prevent nose wheel landings because the Dakota tends to underflare. Piper Cherokees are known for being reliable machines, and the Dakota doesn't step out of line, which is great news for anyone looking to fly one. Pick apart any part on the Dakota, and you'll have no issues finding a replacement. The sheer number of Piper Cherokees on the market means that you'll be able to find whatever you need with relative ease. Servicing a Dakota is also cheap because nearly every aircraft maintenance technician has dealt with multiple Cherokees and it doesn't require specialization to work on. The Lycoming 0540 engine that powers the Piper Dakota is very popular and is used in many different single-engine aircraft, making parts easy to find, and aircraft maintenance technicians with 0540 experience are plentiful. And the best thing about the I-0540 in the Dakota is that it's derated, which means low wear and tear. Despite that the Dakota is a reliable aircraft, it's not without its faults. The brake system on the Dakota is problematic. Pilots often complain that there isn't enough braking authority and that the pedal feels too light. Heavy-duty brakes can be fitted using an aftermarket kit unless the aircraft in question has been fitted with them from the factory. However, once heavy-duty brakes are fitted, it becomes much easier to flat-spot the tires by adding too much force. The Dakota is the go-to model for anyone looking for a bigger Cherokee. Capable, comfortable, and easy to fly, mostly, prices for the Dakota have been increasing over the last few years. Currently, 1979 models are valued at $150,000. Demand for Dakotas has increased, causing prices to rise by 40%. If you're worried about whether the Piper Dakota has good resale value, don't be. The Dakota is a favorite in the Cherokee lineup, and the combination of performance and utility ensures that the demand for the Piper Dakota will only increase. The current price trend for the Dakota is an increasing one, so it'll hold its value for years to come. 
The main competitor for the Piper Dakota is the Cessna 182 Skylane. Why? Because the Dakota was built for the sole purpose of competing against the C-182. While it was in production, the Dakota successfully attracted customers who would have otherwise bought a Skylane because many preferred its low-wing design over the Skylane's high wing. The Dakota beats out the Skylane in a few categories such as maximum cruise speed, payload, and total horsepower. But why is the Skylane still in production while the Dakota isn't? The answer is simple. Piper expected it to perform better, but it didn't through no fault of its own. The C-182 was simply too established and had better specs. The Grumman Tiger AA-5B is also another great option. It's cheaper, but it's not as powerful, and it doesn't fly as fast. The manufacturing history of the AA-5 series is a colorful one. The lineage began with Jim Beatty's home-built BD-1, which first flew in 1963. Beatty designed the two-piece BD-1 with an emphasis on speed and economy and when it was purchased by American Aviation and developed into the AA-1 series, these qualities were carried over. In 1971, when American Aviation became Grumman American, the company identified a need for a four-seat aircraft. It introduced an enlarged version of the AA-1, equipped it with 150 horsepower like homing O320, and called it the AA-5 Traveler. The airplane received minor aerodynamic improvements for the 1975 model year, which was its last year of production. In 1976, the AA-5 Traveler was replaced with the AA-5A Cheetah. With assistance of aircraft designer Roy Lopresti, the airframe was cleaned up to reduce drag, the horizontal stabilizer was enlarged to increase elevator authority and expand the center gravity range, and fuel capacity went from 37 to 52 gallons. Topping the range is the AA-5B Tiger, which entered production as a 1975 model and differed from the Cheetah primarily by being equipped with the more powerful 180 horsepower Lycoming O360. A number of these became known as the Gulfstream Americans when Gulfstream bought the Grumman line and then sold them through 1979. The best thing about this plane is the crisp, responsive handling and excellent visibility. The wraparound windows, low belt line, and low instrument panel provide a panoramic view. Additionally, the airplane can be flown with a partially open canopy, which improves the experience even further. AA-5 prices can vary wildly, but the majority fall in the $75,000 to $100,000 range. Predictably, more powerful, Lower time engines and modernized avionics are the primary drivers behind higher prices. If you like our videos, please smash the like and subscribe button. You can also join us by clicking on the link next to the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.